Um, after yesterday's class, I was talking to a friend about the class. Conversation brought up some questions that we all probably had some time and just pushed away. God is great. God is big. We actually don't say he's big because that's very physical in English. When we say he's kabir, we mean that everything else is sahir. We mean that everything else is insignificant with regard to him. But he's not big in size. And so in English, we, we, we don't say big because big is, in the English language, always has a sense of physical size. But God is greater than everything. Why couldn't he just not allow the devil to talk to Adam and Eve? Um, you know, uh, to eat the apple. Actually, in Islam, we don't believe it was an apple. And I don't know where the apple came from because there's no apple in the Bible either. Um, the Adam ate from the tree, the shajara. In Arabic, what is a shajara? Do you know? When najmu wa shajaru yasjudan. And najm here is grass. Najma in Arabic means to appear, like out of nowhere. So the star appears, najma. But grass also, you know, it can be dry and it can die and then the rain can come and then it becomes green, it grows, najma. So when najmu wa shajaru yasjudan, the najm here is like the grass and things like that. Shajar in Arabic is any plant that has a stalk. It's not just a tree. It could be a bush, it could be also wheat, because wheat has a stalk. So in the Arabic definition of a tree, uh, we, we're not thinking of just these trees out here, we're talking about any plant that has a stalk, a sap. And that's why in our commentary they say that the tree was wheat, or some say the tree was fig, or they say, I think it was grape, you know, they, they suggest different things, but never apple. I don't know where the apple came from. And of course, it's very important that Adam ate, you know, uh, not Eve. You know, she, she's, she's not guilty here in any way. And that's, that's the account. That's the, the prophetic account. Um, <clears throat> you know, that he will um, talk us about, to, to us about disbelief. Um, God creates Satan. Satan is the embodiment of evil. Satan, according to many traditions, um, existed a long time before his fall, thousands of years. And it's said that Satan was called the Arif Billah. He was called the knower of God, the Zahid of God. He was called the Wa'id of the Malaika. In every heaven he had a beautiful name. And he was called Azazil. He was called the glory of God himself. And he was the greatest of the spirits. And he believed. And in fact he was with the earthly angels in particular. And the angels who were commanded to prostrate were not all angels. They're the earthly angels. You have many types of angels. The earthly angels are the most like us and spirits. They're the ones who ask the question. Gabriel doesn't ask that question. Michael doesn't ask that question. But the earthly angels, they are very much like human beings. They're very much also like jinn. They're the ones that ask the question. Um, the secret of Satan was not known to anyone until the appearance of Adam. And these are again haqqaiq. These are realities. They are not things that we talk about in creed. In the creed we just take the story and we will say when we talk about prophets that Adam earned no sin. What Adam did was disobedience. But he earned no sin because he's ma'asum. He's a prophet. So we say he is outwardly commanded not to eat and he is inwardly commanded by God to eat. And this is because of the fact that by eating, even though he establishes a precedent that will be a test for his children, he begins the whole process of the testing of human beings, which begins with the perfect human being, Adam, and with his children, and the first generations of Adam. Adam has over 20 children in Eve, and you know each 
time that Eve delivered, she had a twin. This is why some religions like Zoroastrian religion, they, and a lot of ancient religions, they put very special uh, symbolic importance on twins, because twins go back to the very beginning. And so there was always a boy and a girl, a boy and a girl, and a boy and a girl. And they were not allowed to marry their twin, but they could marry another sibling that was of another delivery. And that's because there's nobody else. This is the way the human family begins. And in Zoroastrian religion and Magian religion, they interpret this in ways that we won't go into right now. You know, but... Um, you know, this was the wisdom of God. And that first generation, these were great people. Thullatun min al Vast numbers of the first generations were great people. And then they also had among those, those were not that way. Uh, in any case, um, God's purpose was to test human beings. And he creates a being who will do that. And this is Satan. And all beings are manifestations of the names of God. But Satan is, as it were, a manifestation of the name Al-Mudil, the one who leads astray. And this is not clear until Adam comes into existence. This is what we talk about in Haqqaiq. And you don't have to believe this. I believe it's true, you know, but... There is great purpose in the creation of Satan and of human beings because we are to be tested to see who we are and to bring out this identity, you know, which is who you really were and who you are now. So God has wisdom in this. Um, you know, John Milton, who's a very interesting poet, he wrote Paradise Lost and Paradise Regained and Samson Agonistes. Um, when he wrote Paradise Lost, he was an Arian Christian. Even though if you read it, you'll think it's Trinitarian, but it's not. And then Paradise Regained, he is a Unitarian. And Samson Agonistes, it's almost like he's a Muslim because he became so close to us at the end of his life, he even acknowledged that Muslims would have salvation. You know, and Samson Agonistes is a poem that any Muslim can read easily and uh, accept. But John Milton in Paradise Lost, this is what he's talking about. Why is Satan there? And what he shows is that for human beings to be as great as they are capable of being and to bring out the light of the prophets in history, you've got to have this antagonist. So this is his nature. And God has wisdom in that. 